with candles. We know a lot about their physics through work like Hans Bethe, who was a teacher of mine at Cornell many years ago. And uh, so by looking at the uh, looking at what's called the, the, the redshift, the, the shift in the spectral lines of, uh, of, of atomic elements, uh, looking at that light, we saw an anomalous, an anomalous redshift. See, here's the thing. The standard model of cosmology of the Big Bang, which we've known since like 1967 at least, when Dickey and Peebles discovered what's called the cosmic microwave background radiation, we've, we, we've known that, uh, that three-dimensional space is expanding. We have an expanding, we live in an expanding universe. We've known that for many years now, okay? And it's uh, Hubble's, it's the Hubble, the Hubble law that if we look at a distant galaxy, the velocity of recession away from the galaxy is proportional to its distance. It's proportional to its distance from us. And we see that because of redshifts in the spectral lines with known elements like hydrogen, helium, you know, lithium, things like that. We see the, 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 the shift in the lines. But everybody thought uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity does predict that expansion rate. And so everybody, there was what's called the standard model of cosmology. But everybody expected that what's going to happen is that the, the rate of expansion of three-dimensional space would be slowing down. It's called the deceleration parameter. Everybody's trying to measure that deceleration parameter. But in 1999, by looking at the anomalous redshifts from these type 1a supernovae, they discovered just the opposite was happen happening. It's speeding up. Speeding up rather than slowing down. Interesting. Now, the only way, and this has been confirmed, more the more data that's coming in. Uh, Did the, the Kobe data have anything to do with that? The Kobe data is something else. We'll go back. Okay. The Kobe data is something else. That, that has to do with the basic Big Bang itself. That's looking into, well, it's not directly the Kobe data, but the Kobe data is consistent and is also uh, the W map. But that, that's somewhat different. That's a different set of data. But there's a general, what's called the concordance model with the COBE data, the WMAP data, the type 1A supernova data. There's also some other Lyman alpha data. There's all kinds of different experimental methods. They all kind of converge this picture that the three-dimensional space of our universe is expanding. By the way, when you think about this, be very careful. You don't think of that, that there are particles, that there are like galaxies that are being pushed by an anti-gravitational force. Uh, what was what, actually happening that the space itself is expanding. The space that the, that, that the galaxies are, are stuck in, it's, it's sort of like flies stuck in molasses. You mean the shell of the, of, of the universe is expanding? Well, the shell, but it's, it's I, space. I don't know itself. if that's the proper okay. word. Uh, you, you can use shell as a two-dimensional picture of what's really three-dimensional. It's the three-dimensional space itself is expanding. Okay. You can make an analogy with, it, with, you can make an analogy with, a, uh, with a balloon, like the spherical surface. It's, imagine you're a bug on a balloon, on a spherical surface, a balloon, and you're blowing at the balloon, the balloon is expanding. You're a little bug, you can only travel on the surface. That's an analogy you can make with the expanding universe where you get rid of one dimension of space, but it's just so you can visualize it. But it turns out that even that picture is no good because what you really have to imagine, because three-dimensional space turns out is flat, what you really have to imagine is an infinite plane, a rubber flat sheet, and every point on the rubber flat sheet is expanding away from every other point, and the expansion rate is uh, is actually accelerating rather than slowing down. So you don't really, so you could think of a of a balloon of infinite radius, and that really describes our actual universe because it turns out expanding three dimensional space is flat. Now it's hard for ordinary people to quickly grok what I'm talking about, but uh, you'll have to just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Einstein would think of this data? I, I mean, I hate to ask you to, to well, try to. I mean, I mean Einstein would definitely accept it. I, you know, Einstein, you know, Einstein would say, "Oh, what a stupid guy it was for that blunder I made." Because it turns out Einstein actually predicted what's called the cosmological constant. Einstein actually predicted this effect in a way uh, at the very beginning. Of but then he tossed it out in the early twenties. Well, he. Uh, because we didn't know enough. Back then, there was so little We didn't have the data. Everybody thought there was just an island universe. Nobody had the picture. Uh, Einstein thought there was a static universe. So Einstein had to introduce this cosmological concept, which today... And by the way, Einstein was working before we understood quantum field theory, so Einstein didn't understand that his cosmological constant uh, could be come from uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right. quantum fluctuation in the vacuum. I mean, all that stuff... I mean, Einstein was working in the early 20s. We didn't understand quantum mechanics until about 1925, 1926. It was only until 19. But he had a heuristic. He had a, a very Well, what happened was Einstein heuristic. first, when he solved his, his classical uh, general relativity field equations, he got, saw that the universe was unstable. It was like expanding. 
And, but that was before Edward Hubble had his data from, I think, Mount Wilson uh, Observatory. And so, uh, I mean, Einstein could have predicted, could have predicted that the universe would be expanding. This is before even acceleration, before dark energy. Just the universe itself expands, but the expansion rate is speeding up. And it's only the latter effect that's dark energy. There are two things. There's the expansion of the universe, which is in Einstein's original theory, without a cosmological constant. Then if you put a cosmological constant of the right size, it's got to be positive in the way, uh, what's called a certain convention of, of, of doing things that physicists use. It's just, it's just a standard uh, notation. Uh, then when the cosmological constant is positive, the expansion rate of the universe is speeding up rather than slowing down. If the cosmological constant were negative, it would slow down, but physically, we measure it from the type 1a supernova, it's actually positive. And what that corresponds to in quantum mechanical terms is that there is a, at large scales, there's a dominating positive vacuum fluctuation density that comes mainly from photons, from virtual photons inside the vacuum. And also it comes from W bosons that make the weak force, and it comes from what are called gluons, from the strong force, but it's mainly virtual light, light inside the vacuum that fluctuates in and out of the vacuum that has negative pressure. And in Einstein's theory, it's the negative pressure that is creating the acceleration of our universe that we're seeing in the anomalous redshifts of the type 1a supernovae. Now, it turns out that the dark energy component is two-thirds of all the missing matter. Okay, it's two-thirds, and, uh, and, it, and the dark energy operates, since it's repulsive, since it's expanding space, the dark energy is operating on a very large scale. The dark matter, it turns out, comes from virtual electron-positron pairs and virtual quark-antiquark pairs, because they turns out they have negative zero-point vacuum fluctuation energy density, and they have positive quantum zero-point pressure, and it's the positive pressure that's three times as much as the energy density. turns out from Einstein's equations, if you have positive quantum zero-point pressure, that causes an attractive gravitational field, and that explains the galactic halos. So in other words, what's happening in the galactic halos is that uh, what are called virtual electron-positron pairs are dominating the halo, this, this, this huge black, almost not quite, it's not really a black hole, but it's this black globular stuff. And what it is is that the uh, virtual electron-positron pairs are dominating that, and they clump just like ordinary matter. And that's, that's the dark matter. But that's only like one-third of the stuff in our uh, actual observable universe. Two-thirds of it is this dark energy, which are virtual photons. Okay, now here's the big problem. The big problem is that if you use standard quantum field theory, now standard quantum field theory doesn't have any gravity in it. Standard quantum field theory, like what's called quantum electrodynamics, the Frank Wilczek model of quarks and uh, leptons and W mesons, they, uh, there's no gravity there. This is part of the problem is they, they don't really know how to unify gravity with uh, elementary particle physics. So if you... Well, that's been, that's, been, uh, that's been a problem for some time. That's been right? a problem for some time, yeah. yeah. It's, well, well, like, it's a problem now. It's considered a problem now. I, I think I partly helped to solve that problem uh, by looking at it in a different way. Uh, but, uh, but what happens, if you use the standard special relativity, 1905 Einstein special relativity uh, applied to quantum theory, and what's called quantum field theory, you get that the zero-point energy densities of these matter fields are much too big. In fact, they're like 120 powers of 10, maybe 124 powers of 10, too big. It's like a, a big embarrassment. Lenny Susskind, in his popular books like The Cosmic Landscape, he calls it... Uh, uh, the the 800 pound elephant in the room. It's very very embarrassing, and it gives a, a very wrong prediction. Okay, this is a problem. Okay, and this is the problem which I think uh, the paper that Crean and I have just published uh, 